Welcome to the uh, Expected Value webinar from Math115.com. My name is Ashish Rastogi. <laughs> I'm Matt Guthrie. And today we're going to go over the basic concepts of expected value. We're going to explain why you need to know it and how you use it. We're also going to go through a couple problems, basic and advanced, to help you understand how to use it. It's going to be really exciting. Listen up. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. The first thing you need to know is the actual formula for the expected value. So the expected value formula, and this should also be on your formula sheet, will look like this. Expected value is equal to the summation, and this I will donate, uh, denote the, uh, the beginning number, let's just say 1, and then the top will be N, so it can go out for as long as you need it to go. Open parentheses, X sub 1 times the probability of x sub 1. And then this can continue out for as many times as you want. So if you wanted to continue it out to more possibilities, you could do plus x sub 2 times the probability of x sub 2. And then end parentheses for the beginning. This is the basic structure of the expected value format. So this is just saying, all right, here's the probability of the first possible event. This is the actual first event. Here's the probability of the second possible event, and this is the actual sec second possible event. You take each of these results and any further results that you may have, add them all together, and that answer is your expected value. Expected value is the same thing as average, but the reason why it's different than what you're normally used to when you usually calculate average is because this is giving weight to probabilities. When you've been calculating expected val or average in the, in the past, you usually just weight everything equally. You assume that everything has the same probability of occurring. Well, here that's not the case. Clearly, x sub 1 has its own probability and x sub 2 has its own probability. Therefore, they need to be weighted differently. So Matt Cut 3 is going to go through an example problem of how we can use this in a basic format. So I'm going to work out a basic problem just to uh, show expected value and how it works. So to start, I, I want to make a table by listing all of our x variables, and then I'm going to label all of their probabilities. So to begin, we'll lay out our x and our probability of success, or the probability that goes with each variable. So I'm just going to start by creating some variables. So negative 10 will be our first variable, which could also be referred to as x sub 1. And then our next variable is going to be 0, which could then be referred to as x sub 2, and so on and so forth, so that we have 5, 10, and 20 for all of our variables, which would then be x sub 3, 4, and x sub 5. So now we need the probabilities to go with each one. So the probability for negative 10, we are going to have as 0.1. For 0, we will have 0.2. 5, we'll have 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0.4 for 20. Now that we have the probabilities, and the uh, x variables. So in this case, the negative 10 will be x sub 1 and the probability of x sub 1, if we want to get really technical, or just outcome probability. We're going to then multiply them together to get our expected value for each one, and then have to add them all up to get the total. So we'll go ahead and finish our table off by adding our expected value column and then multiplying down to get every single one. So in this case, we'll get negative 1, 0, 1, 1 and 8. So now that we have the expected values for each individual um, variable, we're not done. We need to add them all together, as in the summation for the formula that she showed us later, earlier. Excuse me. So we'll have negative 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 8. And if we add all these together, we should get 9. So by following the table and kind of setting them all out like this, it makes it it gives a really easy format just to follow along and um, solve for. So that's kind of a basic one and the easiest way to do it. 